They should be on the verge of tears. <laughs> that Blue Lagoon thing never got to him. I mean, but we're always on that premise, pre premise on that precipice, you know what I mean? I mean, we had this, mate, that thing that we did. I mean, you know, <laughs> that was just rehearsals. Um, <laughs> But you know what I mean, you guys know what I mean, you've seen the show, well, at least hopefully some of you have, but it's an emotionally, <laughs> it's an emotionally connecting show and, and, and that kind of base gives us the ability, I think, to go anywhere. And so mm -hmm. we've kind of got this license and John, you should talk now because they're bored. Of <laughs> <laughs> Enough said, your turn. My turn. Yes. Um, the question you'd asked, yeah? <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Go on. Whatever and you want to talk am. about. I mean, pretty much like, uh, Everybody else, I mean, honestly, and it's just the truth. When I when I got the the, the script, it was sent, you know, whatever, and they and they said, look, you know, I just want to tell you before you read it that the the character that they want you to read for is a teenager, and I said, no way, I'm not touching. I have no desire whatsoever. I was 25 at the time, and I was like, I have no desire to play a teenager. I'm mm -hmm. not doing it. And they said, well, just read it, and then you know, tell us what you think. And I read it, and pretty much like everybody else, the the honest thing is, it. it, it it was, in my opinion, the best piece of television that I personally had ever read. And I thought, okay, this is amazing. And, I, and I'm going to go in, but I'm not going to read. I'm just going to go in and basically try to swindle a guest spot maybe down the road. And, uh, and that's really what I went in with. And, I, and my first meeting was actually with Greer Shepard. And, and I actually said that to her. I said, look, I think this is incredible. I'm not the guy to play this role. Um, I, I don't think I'm right. And, and this is why I don't think I'm right. And I really owe so much thanks to her because, quite frankly, if I were her and I heard some arrogant, ignorant uh, <laughs> asshole, quite frankly, say that to me, I would have said, "I would have said, thank you very much, and you know, see you later." And she didn't. She said, "Well, why don't why don't you just read and let us be the judge?" And uh, and I did. And um, and then I remember I really, you know, when it actually became a slight possibility that 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 they might, you know, that I might actually get to go and do this thing. I, I did everything I could to ignore it because I, I found myself really wanting it. And I think to want something <coughs> is, quite frankly, a real danger sometimes. And uh, What, what? To want something. Yeah. You know, it's like it just sets you up for bad, yeah, yeah, bad yeah. disaster. You know? How weird is that in this business? Yeah, you always true. have to pretend like it's you true. don't want it. Yeah, you've got like, to detach. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like you, you know, got to go to an audition away. like, you know, I really don't want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> and, I don't want uh, the gig, but I'll do it if you make me. It's true. It's true. <laughs> but, but, and this, this is actually, I don't know if, if you know this or you know this, Michael, but, but at, the, at the last audition at, at, at uh, that hotel in Santa Monica, Shutters. Uh, Shutters and, uh, I never auditioned at a hotel. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> well, <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Cat out of the bag now. Turns out I wanted the role. Do tell. Did <laughs> you not audition there? No, no but, but I, I, I remember <laughs> yeah, driving I home. You were in a with Joe right. And I got a call on the way home saying, hey, you, you got the part. And literally 10 minutes later, for some reason, I, I, I don't remember the specifics of it, but I, I pulled a U-turn right in the middle of Sunset Boulevard and got broadsided. <laughs> and uh, so I got the phone call, hung it up. I was so happy. You I went back to the hotel. Went, yeah, I was. I was actually. To thank, thank everybody. And, uh, and, uh, and then I always stuck in my head. It was, it was like all this sort of secret want coming to the surface and sort of exploding, you know, and, and, uh, and resulting in a big car wreck. <laughs> uh, and, and, and since then, you know, kind of like what Kelly said, I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, playing Matt, and I, and I say this kind of selfishly, to be honest with you, I, I really feel like I got a, a supremely lucky draw within the context of this particular story, <laughs> simply because every single season, you know, he's one character that he, he uh, I don't know if I'd necessarily call it evolution, but there's, <laughs> there's, there's such dramatic change in him that it honestly feels... It's just really nice to be able to come to work, quite frankly, and, and to, to have done four seasons, going into the fifth, and really feel every season like you're getting the opportunity to play a different character with the same name. And, um, and well, that, That's interesting, because that's another thing about the show that I think a lot of people don't realize what you said, is it really is a satire of our culture, mm. I think more than any show on <coughs> television. And you know, with the writers, how we begin every writer's room, we're all very close, and we sit in there and gossip for an hour about what did we read about, you know, uh, pop culture events? For instance, when the, the Fomke Jansen life coach thing came about, we were like, are people really paying people to be life coaches? <laughs> like, what? Let's write about that, and then let's make her a transsexual to add another. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but but that's really I think how I think of the show. It really is uh, examining how ridiculous and pushed and extreme people are to fill up the holes in their lives with the wrong stuff. And and that's why every year the the parts the roles always change. And there's always it's like they almost get a new part every year because it's where it really we arc it out and we're examining stuff in our culture that's happening and. I, I feel like it's more than that even. I feel like every episode's like a new character. Yeah. I really do because you get to, I mean, when Dylan was talking about jumping the shark, I mean, we, I remember him and I talking about that, like, God, man, we just put it all out there and like there's nothing to do, you know? And then you get the next episode and you go, I did all that in the one episode? And you're like, <laughs> my mic is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Mic guy, <laughs> um, you could have used mine. You could borrow, but really, like, and 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 it's such a fun show to perform. I mean, I've, these characters are performance oriented characters. You know, it's not like <clears throat> it's not like you just be right. It's not like yeah. you can just so you perform these characters and you do you know from one scene to the next. Actually, in the middle of scenes, you can be three different people. <laughs> well, maybe that's just me, but. <laughs> Right? No, seriously. I mean, you can like be this hard-ass motherfucker one second and turn around and be the sweetest guy in the world the next. <laughs> and like literally have the person that you just denigrated sitting right next to you. You're like, hey, <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> you know, it's really quite incredible. And it's wonderful kind of to get the opportunity to be able to go all over the place. And as he was saying, as everybody's kind of been saying, you know, we do get to play these characters, different kind of characters every year. But I mean, that's more kind of plot oriented and story oriented. But I feel like it's a new character. Every time I pick up a script, I think, uh, you know, I mean, obviously you got the Christian Troy underneath the whole thing, but at the same time you got this ability to go through so many things and express yourself in so many different ways. And the way that the scenes are written, and this is kind of the way that Ryan directs too, is, is you can go anywhere with them, and that's what's interesting about them. And that's what's interesting about working with these guys, particularly as directors, because, <clears throat> you know, they're always thinking of a different direction. I'm thinking of one direction. It's good to kind of get in there and you know, butt heads and kind of work out what is the best and kind of express it in different ways, you know what I mean? So you can go in and you can do a scene, like I was kind of saying before, you can do a scene six different ways. And who knows what's going to work, but you'll find something at the end of it. So it's really kind of... But you guys all, <clears throat> you all find the brave approach to a scene. Everybody in this group will, they come to the set and they don't want to do something safe. You know, uh, once they sort of got through the pilot going, are we really going this far? Literally, every scene is like, okay, how can we take this to the nth degree? What, what's a brave choice? What's a bold choice? I remember last year you came to me in, um, uh, I was directing the second episode of the year, and there was a scene where you were um, uh, interacting with, some, with uh, a, a, a young man who you were trying to save. Um, from hit, uh, a bad fate, and uh, there, it, there was a, a, a homosexual tension that was going to be in the scene, and you were like, you know what, let's push this. You know, I, you know, we talked about, you know, maybe you're clothed here, maybe you're not clothed here, and you were like, let's, I want to be bold with this stuff. Let's not be safe in this fourth year. You know, let me do the scene naked. I want to, I want to do this scene naked. That happens a lot, though, when he says. <laughs> <laughs> Even the surgery scenes, Julie's yeah. like, what about me being naked? How about if I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But everybody, everybody's game. Everybody's brave and everybody's game. <laughs> what did he do? So it's, it's one of the things that makes it, you know, they'll, everybody will go to that, that, that place. Speaking of being game, Kelly, I just noticed now you have sl actually slept on the show with all three of these male characters on the show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Now, one of them's here. our son. <laughs> Romus next. Give me by the appropriate yes, time to compare, and, compare and give notes if you'd like. I oh. give notes. <laughs> I don't think we should go there. Hmm. No. no, I think we should. I think we should. Uh -oh. I don't think Why so. do you look nervous? <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> Julian does stand out a little. <laughs> ah. Well, I won't kill you then after all. <laughs> <laughs> were you guys um, oh shocked? And Dylan talked about being on you know, pilots and stuff. That after the first episode, the first year, I mean, the ratings were just gangbusters. You just like, oh my gosh, we're really in a hit show right now, and my life is about to change. 
You know, I think well, it's, sorry. Anybody. You know, I think it's one of those things where you kind of got your head in the sand a little bit. You know what I mean? Like you're working away, you're plodding away on this show and, you know, we did the pilot. We went straight from the pilot and, uh, and then straight into shooting almost, right? And then it went straight on air and the next thing we knew, we we're getting pretty big ratings for FX and <clears throat> just working, you know, we were working long hours and stuff and then it kind of 